so we are talking about uh, requirements analysis and specification so we have discussed about uh, functional requirements let us talk about non functional requirements what are these non functional requirements these are characteristics of the system which cannot be expressed as functions functional requirements they can be expressed as functions like maintainability portability usability all these are non functional requirements and they also include these requirement include reliability performance you know user interface external system interface security and uh, safety maintainability all these are involved in non functional requirements and then the third part of srs first is functional second is non functional and third is constraints so what is a constraint constraints describe thing that the system should or should not do just for instance standards compliance we want that it should or the system or software should be some software or standard compliant and how fast the system can produce results these are the constraints so about uh, the producing of result it does not overload another system to which it supplies data these are all constraints let us see a few more examples of constraints like hardware to be used or operating systems or dbms like you want to use oracle or go to mysql or db2 and what will be the capabilities of input output devices the standards i just mentioned standards comply means ieee iso ic 12207 which uh, which standards you wish this software to comply and data representations data representation by the system which is interface with your software so what will be the organization of srs document because this is very important what what heading should be there what main con content should be there first is introduction then you have functional requirements then non functional requirements which requ uh, which uh, include your external interface requirements and also performance issues like you know just i mentioned in the earlier uh, discussion and finally the constraints what may be the functional requirements like uh, you have to list all functional requirements with proper numbering you have to have like requirement 1 once the user select the search option he is asked to enter the keywords then let us take one more example the system should output details of all books whose title or author name name matches any of the keywords entered here and details should be all these then coming to the second requirement say when the renew option is selected what is going to happen the user is asked to enter his membership number and password and once the validation is done after the validation the list of book borrowed by the him or by the borrower they are displayed the user can renew any of the books this is the third of requirement 2 by clicking in the corresponding renew box so this is about renewing so you can have more subheadings of requirement 1 r.1.1 that is input will be search option output will be user prompted to enter the keywords then 1.2 input output and the processing part in the similar fashion requirement 2 input output then 2.2 input output and processing right requirement 3 means in 2 only you can have 2.3 what will be the input what will be the output and what processing you are expecting so this is how you write a good srs but what uh, will be a bad srs means i don't want you to be having these contents in your sr documents what will they be unstructured specifications means if you write an essay you know uh, one of the worst type of specification document don't write essay that is you know if you write an essay you won't be able to change and it will not be precise and the sentences because essay would, would contain various sentences and they would be unambiguous you know i mean they will be ambiguous but you will when you will read it will be un unambiguous for the user because you are going to write in his terminology and then there will be a lot of uh, scope of contradictions which you are providing then noise presence of text containing information irrelevant to the problem if something is there you write things which are irrelevant we call them as noise and what about silence aspects important to proper solution of the problem are omitted you are oversighting you are not writing those things which are uh, very important 
these are termed as uh, silence category then over specification and contradictions over specification means how to you are not going to write how to here because this will be covered in design part uh, just for instance library member name should be stored in a sorted descending order or over specification restricts the solution space for the designer these you are not going to write in srs document and what about contradictions contradictions how they arise if the same thing described at several places in different ways described at one point one thing and that should be very clear do not repeat it ambiguity this is uh, an important aspect which i was uh, just suggesting you you ha can have literary expressions like good user interface how how you are going to quantify or verify good user interface and then you have forward references means references to aspects of problem if you are defining it at the point that is okay but if you are referring it uh, later on in the text that will not be considered as a good srs document and wishful thinking descriptions of aspects which you are not able to find out or you are not co confident yourself that you are going to uh, answer them properly or you can find out good solutions realistically this is called as wishful thinking though this is good in uh, real life but in srs document not uh, advisable how to represent now complex processing logic because you will have a lot of processing in a software how are you going to represent it for that you have decision trees you have decision tables right decision trees decision tables so let us start with decision trees decision trees actually the edges of a decision tree because this is a tree so it will be something like you know in the form of tree you will have various branches various um, nodes etc so edges of a decision tree they represent the conditions and this leaf this leaf node represent action to be performed edges condition a leaf they represent actions to be performed so a decision tree gives a graphic view of what logic involved in decision making because actually you are uh, trying to represent the decisions and decisions like if as uh, you know all those things which are going to be implemented or being described in the later section that is design so logic involved in decision making and also the actions which are going to be taken for these decision making let us take an example if you don't uh, if you are not able to understand say a library man management or library membership uh, automation software lms they should support uh, it should support these three functions first new member renewal and cancel memberships so when the new member option is selected what is, what uh, software is going to do the software ask details about the member like the name address and phone number if proper information is entered what is going to happen the membership record for the member is created if information is information is correct a bill is again printed for the annual membership charge plus say the security deposit which will be payable if renewal option is chosen then lms asks the member's name and his membership number and checks for its validity but if the name is valid fine the membership uh, expiry date is updated and the annual membership bill is again printed then if it, it is not valid then you will have a error you will be displayed an error what about cancelling relationship or uh, with the with the library or cancelling the membership the cancel membership option if it is selected and the name of the valid uh, member is entered the membership is going to be cancelled check for the balance amount due to the member is printed and the membership record is deleted so what i just suggested in the form of uh, text these can be represented in the form of a tree like user input there can be a new member renewal cancellation or invalid option so if new member get details create record print bills so whatever i told you in the form of text this can be represented in the form of decision tree and this is quite easy to understand what about renewal get details update records and print bills for cancelling or you know some other option get details print check and then detail delete the record and valid option just print an error message so i hope you got the idea of decision tree then we have decision table what it is going to specify which variables are, are to be tested what actions are to be taken if the conditions are true and the order in which decision making is to be performed so a decision table shows because this is a table so it will be in the form of rows and columns so it will be showing us the processing logic and then the corresponding actions the upper rows of the table means this is a table this is upper row this row is going to specify the variables or condition to be evaluated and this lower rows lower rows 
the action should be taken when the corresponding action uh, conditions are being satisfied and uh, as i said column of the table is called a rule these are the columns and the rule implies what do we mean when we say rule if the condition is true execute the corresponding action otherwise no so this is an example which we just took in the text form then we represented in uh, dec uh, this decision tree form now conditions are like this you know valid sections these these are the conditions these are the actions conditions and actions so valid uh, selection what will be the um, you know output and dis uh, display error message ask uh, member member's name so for valid uh, uh, selection if it is no what is what this is going to do what action should be taken if it is yes what action to be taken so these all has to be written here right so what will be the comparison Wh whether you will be interested in trees or you will be going for tables both these tables and tree they can represent complex program logic decision tree they are easier to read and understand when the conditions are quite small but decision tables help to look at every possible combination in the row and column form all conditions then we come to formal specification a formal uh, this uh, specification technique it is actually a mathematical method to do what to accurately specify a system and then to verify the implementation which satisfies this specification and also proves properties of the specification so what are the advantages of this formal specification first is we have well defined semantics so there will be no ambiguity at all then automated tools are there which can easily check properties of the specification and also executable specification will be there but there are disadvantages of this formal specification technique because we have complex logic here it is difficult to learn and use because it is it will already be in well defined semantics form so you have to be very um, cautious and aware of these semantics and apart from being uh, difficult to learn and use for handling complex system this will not be uh, this is not advisable and these mathematical techniques which i just mentioned what they are going to include they will have logic based theory set theory some algebraic specifications or you can have even finite state machines you might have uh, heard and learned in your automata classes then you can have semi formal specification this will have structured or structured specification languages like you have sadt which means structured analysis and design technique then you can have psl and psa that is a problem statement language and psa means problem statement analyzer so psl this is a semi formal specification language right and this uh, psa this can analyze the specifications expressed in this psl this is how they are related and what about executable specification language if specification is expressed in your formal language then it becomes po possible to execute the specification to provide a system prototype Th that is why this executable specification language is uh, important but this executable specifications they are slow and they are considered to be inefficient also and this executable specification they only test these functional requirements if non functional requirements are important for some product then what the utility of this executable specification language or esl is quite limited then what are these four gls fourth generation language these are simply examples of our executable specification languages and these four gls are quite successful because there are a lot of commonality across these data processing applications so these four gls they are actually uh, dependent or they rely on software reuse where some common abstractions could be identified and they can easily be parameterized what about rewriting four gl programs in higher level languages like c c++ java it results up to 50% lower memory requirement and also the program would run 10 times faster so now we have uh, seen this srs or uh, the next phase after feasibility requirement analysis and specification so requirement analysis and specification is an important phase of software development and any error in this phase is going to drastically affect the phases which are coming up in development and it contains two different activities 
First is gathering, requirement gathering and analysis and then requirement specification. What is the aim of requirement analysis? To gather all user requirement, clearly understand exact user requirements and to remove all the problems which are there like inconsistencies and incompleteness. And the goal of specification after analysis, requirement analysis is to systematically organize the requirements and then document the requirements in an SRS document. And what would be the main components of your SRS document? Function requirement, non-function requirement and then constraints. And what are the methods I explained you about uh, expressing complex logic? You will have decision tree and decision table. Then you can also have formal requirement specification. They have some advantages, but they, are, they have major shortcoming. Uh, means they are difficult to learn and hard to use. So this was about uh, uh, software requirement specification. Thank you so much. Take care.